Today I've got two tops to share with you from the same pattern, some delicate sewing going on, little flounce, lots of practical sewing to see and the most hilarious thing you've ever seen, sewing related of course. Keep watching. Hi sewing friends, my name is Karina from LiftingPinsAndNeedles.com. Welcome to this channel that is all about sewing, limitless sewing. And today I have two tops to share with you, some information that you might like about a sale and also a little thing that happened behind the scenes of trying to get nice photos of these two garments. Uh, I still can't believe that happened but you will see that at the end or somewhere I'll just sneak it in there. Just make sure you watch the whole video so you don't miss out. I promise you, you'll be on the floor laughing at my expense, of course, but I give you all the permission to do so. First, I want to let you know about something really exciting if you like to buy patterns as much as I do. This year, I have been sharing with you some makes that I've loved so much from the brand Sinclair Patterns, an indie brand based in Australia. And I've been really liking the drafting, the instructions, the fact that they come in petite, regular and tall height. So I think whatever height you have, you'll have a good result with this because that is sort of really important in fitting. Anyway, Sinclair Patterns has lately just reached 25,000 members on their Facebook group. Go ahead and join the group because this week from the 24th to Sunday the 30th, they are having daily giveaways there. And also, there is a little post that I'll put here. I have blurred the code that you need there where you can purchase a pattern and get another one free. It's just one per customer. But you know, it is a good deal if you like two patterns from there and you would like to get them both for the price of one. So go ahead and join the Facebook group. It's always good to join these groups because any queries you have about patterns or fitting, anything, there's always so many people there that have already made the pattern and can give you a hand. It's a very active, nice group to be in, very supportive. Go ahead and get the code there if you want to get two patterns for the price of one. This is a daisy blouse I made in chiffon. I've shown this a couple of months ago. I have been really liking this brand, so I highly recommend. So go and have some fun looking at the Sinclair website page if you want to. Let's hop into the tops that I want to share with you today. This is the Aomi woven top from Style Arc and this was the freebie pattern from July that they had. Every month they have a pattern that is free. So if you go and purchase any other pattern and add the freebie to the cart, you'll get the freebie for free. <laughs> this pattern is not free now but it was free in July and it is the pattern that was mostly voted for on Patreon, the Orchid Tia that get a full sew along from me every month. So I did film the entire process from start to finish, every single detail for them there. This top looks simple, it has a V neckline with buttons going down, sleeveless, finished with bias binding, that V neckline and the sleeveless armhole. Curved hem, sort of longish, no darts. And the most striking feature for this top is actually that flounce that you see here on the neckline. So it, it's a flounce that's sort of in that neckline, that V neckline, and it covers the shoulder seam there, super pretty love that so it is a simple style you know it could be made more complex depending on the fabric choice that you make i would stick to flowy fabrics like crepe silk rayon that sort of fabric maybe some linen rayon blend where there's actually more rayon than linen in there just to make it flowy if you choose a fabric that's uh, structured and stiff that flounce is not going to drape beautifully it's just going to stick up like that and it might make your shoulders look wider and that might be something that you want to do. So just take my advice uh, as from my own personal opinion. I don't like to make my shoulders look wider with details up here. So I would stay with a flowy fabric where that flounce would drape really nicely. The other thing is the flounce drapes and when you move, you know, you might sort of see the wrong side of the fabric. So I would choose a fabric that has a really nice wrong side or it's sort of very similar the wrong to the right side so that it won't look ugly, you know what I mean? As you might have noticed from when I did my sneak peek, I chose a very beautiful chiffon I've been hoarding for about three years. I bought it in Chile, brought it with me. I love the combination of colors of the navy, the coral and the whites, just beautiful. So that's what I've chosen because the right and the wrong are pretty much the same. The sizes that are available for this pattern are from four to 30 Australian. And you can purchase this either through single sizing or through multi-size, either, you know, printed pattern or PDF pattern. For the PDF pattern, I got the size range that comes from 4 to 16. There are different size ranges that you can choose if you want PDF. And then all these sizes will be sort of nested. You can't choose layers, so you print them all out. 
which is sort of good because it helps you make flat pattern measurements sometimes you know to get finished sizes and all that you have to go hunting on the website there's not much information on the pattern as such so I did my research and I sort of figured out that across all sizes the positive ease on the bust is only one inch and you know maybe an inch of positive ease is okay if you're working with like a strong type of structured fabric but considering my fabric choices tend to be on the more lighter weight flowier and especially my chiffon I know I don't want to have fitted garments made out of chiffon and for me an inch of positive ease at the bust is considered fitted I would like at least two <laughs> if you have a seam that's just got that stress from being fitted it might start ripping so two inches would be nice <laughs> at the hips it's okay six to seven inches that's okay i chose size 16 for mine now i want to show you some images from the website there are a few modeled pictures here from the designers and i always want to see these pictures because i can sort of see what the intended fit is supposed to be like and for a sleeveless garment i always concentrate on the armpit area and what the coverage is like on the person so just from there, I can sort of see that it's a little bit lower than what I would like. So just knowing that means I need to be really careful. I did choose to make a muslin out of a little piece of crepe I bought from my remnant bin. It was only 70 centimeters, so I didn't have enough of the flounce. But I really wanted to check the V neckline depth and also how high that armhole is going to sit on my body and if I wanted to make changes to the pattern. Because I already knew that that one inch of ease at the bust wasn't good enough for me. I went ahead and added a little bit to the pattern on the get-go to make the muslin because I always want to make wearable muslins if possible for tops like this. So I did make my muslin with an extra inch added of ease and I thought the fit was perfect. Of course I confirmed that the armhole depth was not good enough for me. I wanted it higher. So in a close and so personal you're going to see simple 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 pattern adjustments that can help you customize the fit to what you really want. I know I want to sew things and wear them the way I want to wear them. <laughs> that means for a sleeveless style, a very closed armhole, as closed as it can be, without it actually digging up and being uncomfortable. So I know what that feels like on my body and I know sort of where it is. And I suggest if you like a closed armhole to experiment and figure out what you like because it's so easy to change a pattern to be the way that you want it to be. So I am going to add an inch of ease to the bust in a very sneaky and easy way and you can do that too. You don't need to make huge adjustments like full bust adjustments, none of that. It's just easier than what you think. I'm also going to be sharing with you very practical sewing aspects of this chiffon version and especially how I'm hemming that little flounce there. So let's go ahead to up close and sew personal where you can see all the sewing goodness. other pattern pieces I'm just going to show you the tiny tiny changes I made you might want to do something similar or nothing it just depends I've measured from the top there discounting the 3 8 seam allowance down to my bust height which is 31 centimeters so I've put a line across there perpendicular to the grain line and then that button marking always marks the center of the pattern and then I measured from there to there half the distance between one apex and the other like one bust here the other one over there so that's that little cross that you see actually the distance here doesn't really matter i just wanted to mark it there actually the the height is more important in this case so right there at this part of the blouse on the side is where i would like to have an extra inch of ease if I sew right on the line there, this is the original line, I would just have one inch of positive ease around the whole blouse and that, I don't think that's enough for this type of blouse. So from there, I just extended it by a quarter of an inch and then tapered to nothing up there. And then the paper tapers to nothing around the waist, around there. So it's not a huge change, you see it goes out a little bit, goes back in and when you wear it, you're not going to see this little adjustment. If you add a quarter here, you end up adding half an inch 
and then if you do the exact same thing over here you end up adding a whole inch in total half an inch on one side half an inch on the other so on the back I did the same I drew a line that's at the same level as that other line you can see there they match there they're at the same height but this is the back and I've added the same quarter inch there tapered to nothing up there and then tapered to nothing down there very very small adjustment that is going to give you an inch of extra positive ease just at the bust so that's good now I also wanted my armhole to be a little higher I thought it was just showing too much of the armpit area there so I've raised it by half an inch I marked on myself with the muslin the pin where I wanted it to start getting a little wider and then I just used the curved ruler and just drew a line there and I did similar to the back so just raised by half an inch and then out of there you know you won't be able to tell and this is just a personal preference for me I do like more cover there and I think this will be the screed it won't change the out like the look of the garment it's just going to cover more the area that I want to cover more I have my piece here that is meant to be cut from interfacing and I will be cutting an interfacing piece this wide only I'm going to cut it longer and I'm not going to follow that shape. So I'm just going to cut it longer and from the bottom here I'm going to fuse that interfacing right on the edge here. This is one of the selvages and here is the other one. So I will be fusing interfacing on these edges of the selvage along one of the bottom bits here of the fabric. Uh, the selvage is not ugly. You can see it's not ugly and if I fuse interfacing right up to the edge it's not going to look terrible when I surge the edges all this little furry bit will be gone so I'm not concerned about that on this side I did trim the selvage off because it was just white and that would have looked really bad <laughs> so I'm gonna just be careful to fuse along the edge there like that very very neatly and then when I've got both of these corners of the fabric fused like that then I'm gonna place my front piece on top and cut it out that way I make sure that it's not going to shrink on the bottom and end up being shorter on the center front. That has happened to me in the past, so I try to avoid that by doing it like this. Got my fabric here extended. This is the wrong side of the fabric where I'll be fusing the interfacing. And from one of these corners, I'm just going to fuse on the strip of interfacing I just cut out. And it's the same original width because I need it to be the same width. This will be the facing that will be folded in. It's just a bit longer, so I'll just... Be super careful to align the edge of the interfacing with the edge of the selvage and not fuse it over the furry bits of the selvage. And I am using knit interfacing, it's very lightweight and I've found it works really well with these fabrics. And now I'm going to go to the other end of the fabric around the other side. And this is the other side of the fabric. I'll just put something to weigh it down. And then I'm going to fuse this end as well. So this is an unconventional type of block fusing. I'm basically fusing the area where I will place the front pattern piece and this will end up being the facing that folds in. It's an integrated facing. But I've fused it on before cutting the pattern piece so I can conserve the original length of the blouse at the front. And this really works, I do this all the time. If you've seen my video on how I cut these types of fabrics, you know that I use sticky tape and tape the edges along the edge of the cutting mat so it's nice and straight and it doesn't move anywhere. So that interfaced area there on the edge has been taped down <laughs> to the cutting mat so it won't move. And you can see the interfacing is already there and now all I do is get my pattern piece, align the edge of the paper to the edge there of the selvage and then I just cut it out and then it will be already interfaced and this length will be unmodified because the interfacing is already on there. This is the front piece I've got on the ironing board and I've still got the paper pattern attached to it. The reason I'm doing that is so I can make sure that this is the same length and it's not stretching out and you know it's not changed shape. Instead of stay stitching I've just cut tiny strips of non-stretch interfacing from scraps I have you can see there's no stretch there and I'm going to fuse this on the edge of this neckline right on the edge and this will make sure that this neckline doesn't stretch out or deform or anything like that 
so it's a good idea to do this with fabrics that are so so delicate like this because even if I take this off the paper before I go to the machine to stay stitch I run the risk of it losing its shape and stretching out so by keeping it on the paper at all times I'm making sure that it's not changing and so this little strip of interfacing is nothing special it's not a special notion you can just use whatever interfacing you have so that has been done on this side and I have another little piece for the other side I'll just flip it you can see I've still got the paper there and I actually don't want to remove the paper but I will have to now now I can use the bottom layer of the pattern the other pattern piece that's underneath as a reference so that it doesn't stretch out of shape so I'll just put them on top of each other very gently making sure all the edges match right there so nothing has changed there this top layer is the same as the bottom layer and then I'll fuse this one on there these are just extra precautions to get a really nice result and a really nice looking neckline with these fabrics you know if you're using something better like you're using something not so delicate you can just stay stitch and I would if I wasn't doing chiffon so now I have both of these stabilized you know this is not going to stretch it's not going to deform so I'm very happy with that and I'll be really comfortable to just start working on it now for the armhole I'm not that concerned I will just be stay stitching the armholes right away as well because I don't want them stretching out either I also want to stabilize the back neckline and because this is more of a curved shape I do want to cut a strip of interfacing that actually has that shape so I have my paper still pinned to my main fabric there and I've placed a little bit of interfacing there on the fold be behind everything there and aligned it really nice and neat I'm still going to cut a very narrow strip but I'm going to cut here along the edge so that it takes the shape of it so I've cut a little bit along the shoulder seam and that shape there and then I can just remove that and you can see I've got a little shape and now I'm just going to cut away just a narrow little bit. You can see that this narrow little bit of interfacing does actually have the shape of the neckline and I can go ahead and fuse it on. I have very gently come and put my pattern piece on the ironing board without touching it or anything and I have put gently my little strip of interfacing along the edge. It matches perfectly and now I'll just fuse it on. You know these steps that you do before actually sewing, they can be a bit annoying but they are so worth it. And you can tell when the garment is finished that you've done these precautions because you're not going to have wonky necklines and things that have stretched out that gape. So that's that there. It's very narrow, all this won't be seen, it will be covered with a vice binding at a later stage. But I'm very happy that this is stable and won't deform now. To sew this blouse, I'm going to be using this Microtex needle, which is super sharp and it's really appropriate for these types of fabric. The smallest I have is 80 slash 12, that's the smallest size I have. You know, a 70 would be best, but this is okay. I've sewn chiffon with 80 and it's okay. I'm going to be using a stitch length of 2.6 that is what I like and the first seam I'm going to do is that center back seam of the flounce I have pinned it there together and I'm just going to serge it first and then sew right on the edge I don't want more than a quarter of an inch seam allowance because I'm actually not even sure if there was supposed to be a seam there definitely this is not a piece that you can cut on the fold to keep the grain line like they wanted it very strange but I'll do that first okay so I've got that center seam there I think it'll be discreet on the back next I'm going to stay stitch the small area of the flounce so this area that will go onto the neckline to put this onto the neckline the seam allowance that will be used is a quarter of an inch so I'm trying to stay stitch like smaller than a quarter of an inch they're like really close to the edge this other raw edge needs to be finished this center front there and the bottom all the way around to the other center front the pattern instructions say just to serge the edges and then fold under and top stitch but I think that's not going to look very nice in this fabric so what I'm going to do and it's going to take a little while is just fold under by like an eighth of an inch like that and I'm going to hand baste that all the way around the edges of the flounce and then I'm going to hand baste again so that I'll have a double fold and I'm going to baste again and I know it'll be a little bit lengthy 
but it will give the nicest, most delicate finish here on these edges. And I mean, it is chiffon, it's sheer, you're going to see it, so I like this best. Here I have the edge of the flounce and I folded it in once and now I'm just going to go ahead and fold over again. These little areas of the center have these little points here and I'm going to be very careful to fold these neatly so that there's no raw area left and everything's folded in and it still has a point. Be very careful with that area. This point is sort of in a 45 degree angle, it goes like that so it wasn't that straightforward to fold twice. But I have done it, <laughs> a bit tricky, and you know I'm going to be sewing that edge right there to make it really straight by hand, tiny 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 stitches to just hold it and have it be really even right there. I'll do the same with this. So it'll be an area about a quarter of an inch that I'm going to sew by hand right there. And I will sew everything with the machine. I'll start sewing in one of these centers from there, pivoting there really carefully and all around the edge. And I'll be trying my best to sew right on the edge and not over these basting stitches. I did them more towards the middle. I did press this prior to sewing so that it's all nice and flat and tidy. So I'll just take my time with this. It's no rush. That's how this is going to look after it's been stitched with the machine. Now I can just pull out the basting stitches. This is the point here where I knew this was going to happen and this is what I'm going to fix by hand sewing. So I'm just going to tuck that in just a little bit there and do a few hand stitches just to hold it there so that it looks really smooth like like a nice point and the same on the other side. Okay here is a far away look at what I want to show you. Basically this is the back right there. That is one front, that is the other front. The shoulder seams have been sewn there underneath. And what I have on the neckline here is the flounce. So this is the right side of the fabric and the flounce has also got the right side of the fabric up. So it's basically wrong side of the flounce to the right side of the blouse, matching the center back and then pinning all the way around to the center front there on both sides and I'll show you up closer. Okay, here you can see it pinned. You know the flounce remember I stay stitched it so it wouldn't stretch out and it would match the neckline and that is okay. Now there is a notch right there. Okay here we can see the center front. I have flipped the blouse over so these are the two fronts there. That shape there is how this integrated facing has been true to the neckline. On the other side is the part that was interfaced at an earlier stage. From that area there, that little corner, there's a notch on the pattern just above that. And that's where the flounce has to reach and that's on both sides. I'm just going to go ahead and hand baste this flounce onto the neckline so it's right there and then we can forget that the flounce is there and we can just treat the neckline as one piece. Remember we're looking at the right side of the fabric of the front and the right side of the flounce. The flounce is wrong sides to right sides. So the flounce is hand basted onto the neckline so I can forget that it's there. You can see that where the flounce starts at the center, I have basted there and down a little bit so it just stays there. Now I want to point out that there might be a pattern error there. I mean I'm pretty sure there is an error of some type because what the pattern piece for the flounce says on the pattern piece doesn't match what one diagram shows in the instructions. So the pattern piece has notches there and those notches to me signify that there is a center back seam on that flounce here at the back. Also on the pattern piece it says cut two. So when you look at those instructions on pattern pieces, I, I go by them and I cut them out. Then looking at the diagram, on one of the diagrams there it said fold, like it was meant to be cut on the fold. But if it was, it wouldn't match the grain line mark that they had on the pattern piece itself that was correct. So whether there was supposed to be a seam there or not, because I was in doubt, I just did a seam and I just made it small. I made it a quarter of an inch instead of three eighths of an inch just to, just to be on the safe side and that worked fine. I have to say, you know, with all these patterns, the instructions only come in a list in a little page. You know, you're not gonna find step-by-step -step pictures and that much at all. Um, it's, I don't think this brand aims to teach you how to sew. Uh, it's not a hard make, you know, it's not difficult at all and the diagrams are excellent. 
but if you want very detailed, detailed, detailed instruction, you're not gonna find it there. I keep returning to this brand because I have repetitive good results with the drafting and at my level of sewing, I'm not at the stage where I need that detail. You know, I sort of, I can see a garment and I know how it's gonna go together. And if I see a little diagram there, all the best, it's got all the techniques I like. Nothing that is in the instructions is something that I wouldn't have done myself if I was just sewing, you know, on my own terms. So that's why I keep returning to the brand, even though the instructions are sort of scant, you know? It is very transparent, it is completely sheer. I need to wear a camisole underneath. Um, I have them in all colors, you know. They never annoy me because I like sewing these sheer things. And this is the flounce there. I will leave a link below to a video where I've shown how to do this type of neckline. The only difference in this one was that the flounce was basted on. You saw me baste it on and from then onwards I was gonna ignore the flounces there and just treat that neckline as one piece. So basically the binding I have there sandwiches the flounce and it's so neat. You know I like my satin bias binding, I have it in navy, it's understitched and then stitched on the edge and it's super neat. I always trim my bias binding, I use 18 millimeter and I trim out that first little crease just to make it narrower and when it's narrower it conforms to curves and it just it's so much better. I did that here as well. The pattern has pattern pieces to cut your own binding from self fabric um, but I mean this fabric is beautiful and I had just enough left to make another garment like a cami and it really hurt me like to my soul to use that amount I had there to make bias tape when I could just use this gorgeous satin bias tape that always gives me great results that I've brought along from Bolivia. Um, my approach to buttons is trying the blouse on, pinning it, finding where my apex is, marking, and there has to be a button there right at the apex. That doesn't usually match the marks that are as reference on pattern pieces because I don't want to have a space there and then my apex being the middle, that means it's going to gape and who wants a gaping front button down feature? No. <laughs> Okay, so Style Arc uses 3-8 seam allowance on the main seams and these are the shoulder seams there. I have done French seams and I've done French seams on the sides as well. Super nice. I mean, chiffon is perfect for French seams and don't think you can't do French seams when the seam allowance is only 3 8 The first stitch when your fabrics are wrong sides together is at 1 8 of an inch and then you flip it and then the next one is at a quarter of an inch and that will give you 3 8 so let's see how this one looks on, how it fits. Here's a far away look at my chiffon Aomi top. Can't see the details from far. It is sort of longer than what I usually wear, but it's fine, I won't change it. It's got curved hem at the back, so it's quite longer at the back than at the front. Lovely print, I love this over denim. It's just, yeah, I love the combination. Here you can see the bottom, how it curves out to the sides. No darts here, but it's so well drafted, you don't really need that. And it fits perfect. Next time I make this, I will make it a little bit shorter. I will probably keep the length that it has here and just sort of even it out so it's sort of the same at the back. I think it's just too long at the back. Hem has been folded twice hand basted the same way I hemmed the flounce. It's super neat. And for chiffon, I did it all the way to the end right there. Buttons, buttons are navy and white. I think they look really cute because I do have white in there as well. Okay, here you can see the flounce is super cute. It goes over the shoulder seam right there. I think that looks nice. And you can see how closed I achieved my armhole to be. That's exactly like I like it. Super closed there no bit of armpit showing and that's what I achieve with customizing patterns to the way I like them. Hem super neat, the little points are super neat too, I'm super proud of how this looks. It's a button band with the buttons, I can easily pull this over my head without undoing the buttons. If you didn't want to do buttonholes maybe you could just sew the buttons on and save yourself some time. <laughs> Inside is super neat with the bias tape there on the neckline, you can't see that. Um, holes have bias binding too and you also can't see that, they've been nicely understitched and all that. On the back it looks like that, you, you'll never know that I did a seam there on the center of that flounce. And the V, the depth here is just right. So I love the look, I think this is super floaty and just really nice. Just different, I've never done actually anything like this. I thought it wouldn't suit me. 
I just thought the flounce would have more volume and it would be more poofy but it's all about the fabric choice I think this chiffon is perfect because it doesn't stick up or give me any more volume on the shoulders where I, I don't want to add more volume to my shoulders so really nice I can't stop touching this thing <laughs> I really like this pattern I really like it a lot so the only thing I would change from this I have already adapted the arm side and the width here that's done I would just level out the hem so that it's not so long at the back so that it's just even with the front there and I think it's a nice length to wear something fitted on the bottom you two pictures of my wearable muslin I had already adjusted the ease on the bust to be what I want it to be so that was okay that was fitting okay but what do you do with the armholes when they're too low it's not like you can add fabric down there right you can always pull and get the sneaky dirty trick out of your sleeve that is not really recommended for formal sewing like I wouldn't actually adjust the pattern this way if I was just starting to work on it that sort of thing it wouldn't be a formal adjustment I would do but if I have a garment that has already been made uh, muslin and I really want to wear it I will go ahead and do this I have done this also with ready to wear clothes that don't fit really well and the armholes really low and it's basically just bring it up from here you bring it up from the shoulder seam now if if this has a sleeve then you know don't go there but this is a simple sleeveless style that doesn't have a pasta that's going to go up as well so you don't need to consider that i took up the shoulder seams by half an inch when you take up shoulder seams by a little bit the shape of the neckline will distort a little bit on the back but you can easily just you know trim and make that smooth again no drama there so on my pattern piece i had raised my armhole by half an inch and that's how I made the final one and it fits perfect for this muslin I took it up from here half an inch and the armhole ended up being at the same position after talking on and on about this one let's just show it to you <laughs> bubble crepe and it is a directional print because you have flowers and stems all going in the same direction so I had to be careful with pattern placement but this did fit on one length of fabric only 70 centimeters so very nice I love making things with less fabric I finished the neckline in the same way it's just more simple it just doesn't have a flounce in there you know and I've got the buttons everything is the same the only difference with this one as I mentioned is that I fiddled with the shoulder seam to bring the armhole up now before I go and show you the lookbook <laughs> real life here I was out there I took the nice pictures I felt a lot of buzzing around my ears but I always hear buzzing here there's flies there's all sorts of bugs out there so I don't really pay much attention to them I took the pictures I put my camera in a different place to film because I always film for you and show you the garment on as I was starting to talk about this and that look at this la 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 this happens I sped it up to make it look even more ridiculous but it was actually super ridiculous I have a bump right there on my scalp this just happened a few hours ago my husband and my son with the light on the phone were like digging through my scalp trying to find the stinger until they were able to find it and pull it out with a tweezer so painful oh my gosh and my first ever beast thing had to happen on camera while I was filming this top <laughs> it's just Anyway, I hope that gave you a giggle. You are absolutely encouraged to laugh and, and see that many times if you want to. After that, you know, I had tears going down my face. I had been shaking my head. I went out to the front of the house and finished filming how it looks. So let's see how it looks. <laughs> 
This is my wearable muslin. I was able to make it very wearable by raising the shoulders. As I told you, an arm size really good. These are a little bit long, has the same shape as the other one, quite long at the back here. And you know, if I let go of the last button, I can do this and I really like that. Maybe that's a perk of having a longer top than what I would like. I can do this as well. There. The V on this one might look a tad higher than the original because I did bring it up by half an inch here. But it is exactly the half inch I'd added to the other arm side. So now I have a really closed armhole, just like I like it, totally wearable. By its binding inside, super neat. And this is the same thing, just minus the flounce. I didn't have enough of this little piece to do the flounce. Uh, but this is totally nice, I would wear this a lot. Very spring-like for me. Although most of you are headed to autumn, I'm headed to spring and this one makes me really happy. I would say you know if you've made a garment and your armhole is too deep just go ahead and do a dirty fix if it's gonna give you a wearable garment go ahead and do it whatever it takes whatever it takes but don't do that as a, an adjustment like that you would actually do to a pattern piece you know you might deform the neckline you'll do all sorts of things you know this is just to make it wearable let me know if you've been stung by bees i am terrified of them i hate i mean i love the honey i love them as creatures i respect them they must be protecting some queen out there because there is a hive forming on the roof and that's why i'm filming inside i can't go out there actually they are just everywhere out there so i don't know we're gonna have to get some specialists to take them away alive and healthy and all that stuff Thank you so much for watching and I will see you again very, very, very soon with another sewing video. Bye. Ooh.